The big question on a lot of people's mind is whether it's going to be cloudy as we head toward next week. Things will come better into focus, but Craig, as we're looking at things right now, uh, this looks like an April eclipse, doesn't it? Oh, when we're man. talking clouds and the potential. I mean, you want you want to have those clear skies yeah. because this is something, when you look at just any city mm -hmm. that gets in on the path of totality, let's take Dallas, for example. For sure. On average, we won't see that happen for Dallas mm -hmm. for another 400 years. Wow. That's the average and how rare these, these are. Eclipse happens. Sure. I mean, actually, you can get solar eclipses every, like, twice a year or so. But... To move over the same exact city. So for people living there that don't want to travel, you're just yeah. hoping for clear skies. And it's a know? major city. People traveling there anyhow. Yeah. You look at the, the, the map. I read this almost like a traffic light, right? Yeah, yeah. Green That's is like, way. all right, we're good. Systems look good. Yellow, proceed with caution. Red is like, oh, man, this mm -hmm. is not look good. It's in all stops. And a lot of that goes over portions of the Great Lakes. The farther south you go, maybe a better chance? That's the thing. This map, and here's the, it's subject to change, exactly. right? We're not, we're not looking at just right. one specific forecast model this is a Literally. general thinking a little bit of climatology worked mm -hmm. in here too i mean we have some forecast models that are now within range of this time period yeah but to look at those run by run you'll you'll, you'll change you'll too. drive yourself <laughs> wild because you see how wild and how much it, it changes still gonna right? be changing for sure one thing you had mentioned the great lakes mm -hmm. and we we were talking about this earlier the lake shadow effect this might so cool this might be more of a mesoscale feature that that only folks who live uh, closer to the Great Lakes know, or those who live near bodies of water. Yeah. On eclipse day, what we're hoping, Erie, Pennsylvania, let's take for example, yeah. in the path of totality. Right. If we have Lake Erie, it's it's cold right now, it's mm -hmm. cooler. Mm -hmm. If we have a cold day over land in Erie, Pennsylvania, thumbs up. Yeah. That might provide a clear opportunity because what you what you kind of get is this subsidence, this sinking air. Yeah. You don't get the moist sort of wind that's moving off of Lake Erie yeah. condense into clouds. Right. But if it's a if nice it's day, a nice day, and you've got temperature contrast, you've got the evaporation, you've got some of those clouds build up, mm -hmm. and they start to build up and drift away from the shoreline. So the closer you are to the shoreline, you might have a better chance. Better but as shot. they build up and they build to the south, you have more in the way of cloud cover. It's an interesting, fascinating it, it, uh, it is. weather setup. And I think we're talking this way because of our, our map that we're showing with, yeah. with the probabilities. It doesn't look all that great for the Great Lakes right now. Yeah. But but just I think be patient as, as we get a little closer. <laughs> through the weekend we'll have more of a consistency among forecast models and we'll know we have the times yeah. for you in central and eastern time right. this thing is going to move pretty quickly but we're hoping for clear skies we're hoping that the sun's up